Смерти! It's a sudden stop at the bottom. This game chronicles the events leading up to Riddick's movies and along with Assault on Dark Athena helps to fill in the narrative gaps. We also learn firsthand of Riddick's tumultuous history with Johns. The game was first released in 2004 on the original Xbox before being ported to Windows a few months later. And in 2009, it was released with enhanced graphics as part of the Dark Athena anthology. This was an attempt to overcome compatibility issues with the original version, especially with AMD cards. You're gonna get taking me to Butcher Bay. I'll briefly go over the console versions. The original Xbox release can be emulated on Zemu, and as you can see, the graphics are still rough, with various glitches ruining the experience. Inmate on the run! The 360 version is running on Xenia with a host of issues. But the biggest problem is that things get dark sometimes. And when I say dark, I mean really dark. You literally can't see anything. Butcher Bay. You know, you always take me to the nicest places, Charles. <laughs> the PS3 version is emulated on RPCS3, and it's actually playable. However, you have to run at 720p to avoid graphical errors. And even then, the game seems to be running at a lower resolution so it's very blurry as a result. For the purposes of this video, I'll only discuss the Windows versions since they are easily the best way to play the game on modern hardware. At the start of the original version, there's an OpenGL-related crash. There's a custom fix for users with NVIDIA cards, but AMD users can't play this game. Like I said, this was why Butcher Bay got a remake in 2009. It swapped OpenGL for DirectX, which solved compatibility for AMD cards. However, it's still nice to look back at the original to see how it differs from the remake. As for settings, I would advise users to push graphics to their highest presets. Under Display Mode, switch Pixel Aspect to Normal. The other modes make character models look either too wide or too narrow. Under Shader Model, there is only one setting. To ensure that all options are available, choose the one I have activated here. The original version has a surprisingly modern presentation and compares well with contemporaries. Half-Life 2 and Doom 3 look marginally better, but I do like the use of stencil shadows in Butcher Bay. I should mention that I experienced some audio skipping on Windows 10 and 11. It's not often and only appears to affect music, so feel free to turn it down in settings if it's distracting. The 2009 remake includes Assault on Dark Athena, which continues the story. Not everyone will like the graphical changes from the original. The overall image is a lot less sharp and the colours are clearly more muted in comparison. As for settings, there seems to be two major additions, including ambient occlusion and post-processing. For some of you who don't know, post-processing includes things like depth of field and motion blur. Nothing else appeared to change, but disabling post-processing does lessen the softness of the image. It's still not as sharp as the original, but at least there's an improvement. As for ambient occlusion, it was still early days for the technology. It was first implemented in Crisis, and in the two years leading up to Butcher Bay, not much had changed. Ambient occlusion was much more primitive in 2009, mostly adding shadows to nooks and crannies, and they were still fuzzy at the time. The real problem is character faces get smudged with shadows, especially in poorly lit areas. And even worse, ambient occlusion and anti-aliasing can't run at the same time, so it may not be worthwhile to even bother. So now, we come to the part that all of you wanted to see, comparisons between the two versions. I have all settings maxed out. I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy my shit. Wait this one out nice and easy. The Achilles, including this one. Now you ain't paid me for that shank, so it ain't yours. 
Come take it. You got a hearing problem. I said everything I see belongs to me. See this? It belongs to me. Release him, Friddick. Rust is mine. And I will personally bring hell down on you if you don't let him go. In conclusion, the remake is more compatible with modern systems, but the original is more colourful and I like its graphics. The remake can be tweaked, but ultimately you should decide which version is right for you. If you found this video useful, please remember to give a like. It really helps with the algorithm. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.